Um, while we're waiting for the Irvine Underground, um, I spent three hours with the Metro Police Department last night and about three hours collectively with security. Uh, as of this morning, ladies and gentlemen, historically, of all the DEFCONs, this has been the least provocative, least problem-filled, best DEFCON held in Las Vegas. <laughs> because I have to put up with the likes of assholes like you. <laughs> oh no. We watch him daily. Um, the feedback I got was hotel security was 98% happy with us. Um, I, 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 will, I will tell you honestly, they coming in the door, we had, and I, I was told this by Metro, they had Metro SWAT on tactical alert. <laughs> which is kind of frightening because you can't really snipe bits and bites. <laughs> but God bless them, they were on alert. The hotel security guys had four single space typed pages of all the crap we had pulled over the years. No? Do, do I have dumbass taped on my forehead? I'm not even going to bother. It's too easy. Um, so, I. From, from my point of view, I want to thank you actually for making this one of the most pleasant DEF CONs uh, that I've had the pleasure of attending. Uh, and hotels, like I said, hotel security was 98% pleased with it. The 2% they were not pleased with actually had to do with some very isolated incidents. The, That was marketing demographic 49B, the anarchists. <laughs> the, uh, the, the point I guess I'm making is, it looks like we're coming back next year. <laughs> that, that being my personal opinion from the feedback from security who said, you know what, you guys, we literally thought it was the Visigoths and the Huns coming off the planes. Th thank you, CJ. Where, where is CJ, by the way? Where, where is CJ, by the way? We're going to get him here to do that because he looks just like that guy in the commercial. Um, and they were actually very pleasantly surprised. And they also want to thank you for being so respectful and so polite. Uh, they, said, they said they weren't cursed out once by any of us. Everyone was very polite. And I'd like to personally ask you to please continue that tradition because we're finally in a convention where we actually have air conditioning. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but this broken down old asshole would prefer to stay in an air conditioned venue as opposed to a 110 degree in the shade at night venue. So if you could all please continue to do such a great job of policing yourselves and taking care of that 2% that tries to ruin it for the rest of the 98% of you. That would be wonderful. And again, please give yourselves a round of applause for putting on such a great con. <laughs> Have the Irvine Underground arrived yet with their Fed? Bring him on down. Can I announce him? Here comes the Fed. Sorry? I need to announce a special agent Hilbert. I need to announce. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where he went. Him up. Bring him up. We found him earlier. He White came to our booth. White courtesy phone for special agent Hilbert. White courtesy phone, special agent Hilbert. Right, that usually doesn't work. The bureau's gotten smart to that one. 
<laughs> yes. All right. Uh, by the way, if the gentleman who just met with me upstairs could please come find me after we're done here, I uh, would really appreciate it. And the gentleman that I talked to in the hall uh, about coming and finding me as well, I want to make sure that we close the loop on some stuff. Yeah, that should get the conspiracy theorists going. <laughs> so, what do you got? He's not here. I've got his card. That's all I got. <laughs> now he's got his card, yeah. Now, okay, we've got a card of a fit. Where'd he go? Yeah, sorry guys, you got well, we have one. I, I have a really good story. Mind if I tell it real quick? All right. We can do me. I have a really good story. Special Agent Hilbert actually came to me four years ago, I believe, to, to ask me a few questions about something that was going on in my local area. He came, he came, <laughs> walking, in, came walking into my house. It was an interrogation, just a little. Walking into my house, and my grandmother answered the door. She politely let them in the, in the, inside sat them across the couch from her and continued to play solitaire as they began the interrogation on her. By the way, guys, remember it's like vampires, you have to actually invite them in. Yes. <laughs> it, was only two it was only two minutes until my grandma caught on quickly as to what they were asking about, called my name, and I came rushing forward to the unfortunate scene of two feds and my grandma playing solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> Your tax dollars at work. Yes. That's a great story. Thank you very much. Good story. That's a fun one. I think we're ready for the, the, the man of the hour, Mr. Dark Tangent, the guy who actually makes this all possible. And I'll turn it over to Jeff. Thanks, guys. This is my well-deserved rum and coke right here. I earned it by uh, challenging a Fed that busted me the last two years in a row by uh, using one of those challenge coins on me. So this year I came prepared, and he, he coughed up. So this one's for you, Jim. I'll be reading about you in Wired Magazine next week, so. OK, so before we get started, basically what's going to happen here, we've got about an hour. We're going to do uh, uh, kind of a con wrap up. We're going to thank the goons. Um, then we're going to go through all the contests. We're going to hear from the people who ran the contest, what happened, what's going on. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about next year. Uh, and then we're going to let you guys, you know, set you free and, uh, and then hopefully see you again next year. So to start it all off, first, um, I want to mention a couple of things that led up to us changing venues. Um, how many people here by show of hands thought that we had outgrown the AP like three years ago? Five years ago. <laughs> Five years ago, right. Well, it took me three years of looking to find a hotel. And when we found the hotel, it took a year to get into their schedule. So, I mean... We knew it was painful at the AP, it's just we didn't have a whole lot of options to get out of there. Um, but now that we're here, the problem is it's easier to create uh, parties than it is to create content. And I was really trying to find a place that would allow us to do a lot more content. So for next year, we have where the dart throwers are, that old other half. So we have even more space. And then down the whole hallway there, all those little rooms, we've got all those. So now the problem is we've got more space than we know what to do with. So part of my challenge to you is, now you've been here and you've checked it out, start thinking, like, what do we do with all this space? Do we do tutorials? Do we do training? Do we do little breakout sessions? <laughs> but, but are they Asian strippers or blonde strippers? Or? <laughs> that answer is yes. So, uh, so once you guys get back home, I don't know if you've noticed, but we've moved the DEF CON forms to a new machine. It's faster. It's on its own bandwidth now. And uh, we just bought some photo moderation software that we're going to be integrating next week. So you can upload all your con photos, and you can organize them, and people can vote on them and do whatever. Well, we also want you to give us feedback there and come up with a contest idea. You'll notice that these guys who play the games or run the contests we didn't go down and find them. They volunteered. They came up to us and said, hey, I've got an idea. Can I do it at your show? And DEF CON's turned into this great platform where I can give you a stage, I can give you a room, but it's really up to you guys to figure out what you want to do with it, you know, if it's leader or if it's lame. And we'll figure that out real quick. Um, so with that in mind, just start thinking about what we want to do with all this space. And, uh, and you guys are going to figure out the parties. That's uh, going to be an easier thing to solve. You know, we don't have pool2girl.com anymore. But, uh, but we're going to try to do something outside or now that the hotel knows who we are, we have a little bit more negotiating power. 
Um, yeah. We're going to try to get one of the whole towers so we can just stick our guys in one of the towers so there's like no you know, norms around us. It's just kind of, yeah, just kind of us. Um, but when we came to negotiate with them, we we're like, we want the tower, we want your TV system, we want your network, then we'd like the pool. And, yeah, and they looked at us like, what the hell? <laughs> who, are, who, who are you? So, uh, but now that we made it through this first year, I think we can do a lot more. I need to take my electronics off very quickly, I'm told. <laughs> You're a very crazy man. OK, so I want to kick it off. Um, first. Uh, if Zach isn't here, is Zach here yet? He's still not back there? Okay, we'll introduce Zach. Where is he? I don't see Zach. Zach. What we're going to do is we're going to get all the goons up on stage, all the people. Uh, if, you're, if you're doing security and you're still in the back of the room, if you see anybody wearing a red shirt or a green shirt or a blue shirt who helped run the show, raise your hand if you somehow helped run this show. And let's get a round of applause for everybody who helped out. Come on, raise your hands. <laughs> All those guys up there, they're hiding out in the death zone. <laughs> yeah. Come on up. So let me introduce you to Zach. Many of you might know Zach as the, he's the master behind the puppets. Um, I'm sort of the, the guy at the wheel, but without any of these people, there'd be no car, there'd be no road. And uh, while I'm over at Black Hat, Zach's job is here to set the show up and take care of operations once it's running. So Zach wants to do something special for all the goons that have helped out. So I'm going to pass off the microphone to Zach. We get done with the ceremony. We're going to do a little question and answer session with anybody who's remaining. I can answer some of your questions. And we can do a little planning for next year. And we can go drink. So, Zach, here you go. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> Zach, who's not nearly drunk enough. Okay. So, can I have all the goons on stage? The ones that are down here. Red shirts, come on, get your ass on stage. There are many, and there are slackers up there in the network box, security. Okay, I just dragged my arse in here, so I think Jeff already said hi to the network team. So, Lock, Heather, Video Man, Squeak, Luis, Wes from the hotel, Derek and James from Rant Radio, thank you very much. It fucking worked. Now, where's the big man? Is Priest and Lloyd down here? Or are they up there boozing? Ah, okay. So, could you step this way, please, sir? <laughs> not quite yet. Hey, I'm my best personal loud hailer, <laughs> Mr. Priest. Lloyd, who's uh, his uh, smaller clone, <laughs> but is, in fact, Chief of Security and his boss. Fun enforcement. Uh, so, Pappy, John Doll, Gob minus one, Flea, Quee, Freshman, and? Come on, the list. Let's uh, have all I don't of have the list off the top of my head. Yeah, you do. Yeah, but there are a couple of guys I do want to single out on the security staff, though, that did a bang up job. Um, Pappy, first off, would be my second in command. He's up there on the. <laughs> I also want to point out uh, nobody in Arclight. I'm not sure if either of them are up there. But uh, we had a medical situation the other night, and nobody is actually leaving the country in the next couple of weeks to go become Dr. Nobody. And Arclight is with Search and Rescue out of San Bernardino and is an EMT. The two of these guys were so on top of it that the hotel just backed off, let them do their job. They were impressed. I was impressed. They were consummate professionals. And I can't thank the guys highly enough for the way they behaved. Is the guy going to live? 
Yeah, guy was just fine. Guy was just fine. Also, we got some new guys on this year. Skydog, Decode from Freaknik. Um, picked up a guy by the name of David from Poland. And everybody worked out great. Uh, the teams ran smoothly. And I don't think we could have asked, uh, barring some of the issues that went on last night, I don't think we could have asked for a better convention. The attendees were great. Everybody we interfaced with was just happy to be a part of things. When we had to tell them things, they knew we weren't doing it to just be a jerk. There was a reason behind it, and everybody was happy to comply, and it really made the event run smoothly, and I'd like to thank you guys for doing that. Thanks. Well done, guys. You didn't kill the hotel. Okay. Uh, Tucked away in the box up there, we've got the dispatch team, which is Cat, Noise, Ben, Doolittle. They can probably only hear us over the radio, so thanks guys to the dispatch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, another team that's been doing a bang up job. Uh, for years and years and years, we had lots and lots and lots of really, really drunk speakers. <laughs> And Agent X and the speaker control team. Uh, yeah, Proctor, KK, who was, and uh, Crash are also involved in a, a, a medical response. Code 24, <laughs> Nick Farr, <laughs> Mike Amish, and Quagmire Joe. So let's put it together for speaker control. Okay, so you're going to see Russ up here in a minute with the, the contest, but Russ, Pyro, Dan, Eric, Mel, Uber Snitchell, Rick, Brian, Brian, Dennis, and Ray all worked on the contest. Everything went smooth. People got wet outside the dunk tank, including me. Uh, so, contest. We regged almost 7,000 people. It was a nightmare, uh, but lines moved quick. So, TW, Q, Rahel, Seastone, Octopussy, and Tyler Cohen. Reg. And also shouts to Chuck and the Reg Grannies. Also, at the swag booth, Rescue, Skinner, Dara, Deadhead, Rick, Brian, Neil and Neil. D-Ren, Skybox, Doolittle, Nikita, Cyclone, Venice, Travis, and A. Oh, no, no, I've got a slot for Black Beetle. Da, 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 da. <laughs> anyway, Swag Booth, we're all wearing it. Okay, Quartermasters, we, we move lots of crap around. Major Malfunction, Tom, ETA, and Jacob. Without it, we wouldn't have stuff. So, not long to go. Okay, Romer, Alex Rogan, Forcus Maximus, and Evil Swag. And Vendor Area, sorry. Okay, Info Booth, because stuff need, people need to know what's going on. Forker, Snakebite, Mellow Man, Clone Loader, Griffet. Jen, Tozer, Catch and Rescue. Okay, uh, we have press. Uh, Nico Sell, Dirk, Nicole have been actually managing to make sure the press stayed in line and they did a bang up job last year and they're here again and again. So, press guys. Drifter, who sorted out all your parties in the skyboxes. <laughs> okay. Black Beetle, ETA, all that team that actually designed, put together all the swag, and there was good swagage this year. I actually, I'm going to have to FedEx my shit home. Uh, thank you very much, Black Beetle. Thank you for that. Okay, now there are three last people. There's Cheryl, who's here. Yeah. Yeah. 
who interfaces with the hotel. There's also, uh, I don't know if they're in the room, Teresa Madsen and Doug, our hotel head of security. They are the guys that made this a rocking con. This space is great, the setup was a breeze, and uh, you know what? No one died, so it's a good thing. And uh, that includes the Hotel AV. I did network already, didn't I? Yeah, I think I did real fast at the beginning. Cool, okay, and that's about it. So give it up for the goons of Def Gone. Hey, so far, some of you who've been around a while notice that our, uh, our contest area has been growing each year. And that's because more and more of you guys have been getting involved. Well, it got to such a state that we decided we had to have one person drive it, and that's Russ. Russ has put in so much time and so much energy. You might also know him. He's really involved in our DC groups, our planning lists, and organizing new DEF CON groups. So I don't know how he has time for his, his own company, and us, and you, and a wife, or girlfriend. Shh. <laughs> a life. Let me say that. Time for a life. So I just really want to thank, uh, thank Russ and single him out because a couple years ago he really re-injected a lot of new life into the contest area and, uh, and he really kind of pushed me to, to get the games in order. And so I just want to thank you for that and I want to pass it off to you to uh, introduce us to these games. So thank you. Thanks. All right, so this is the, uh, the long part of the award ceremony. I will be as brief as I can because everyone else is going to be really wordy. Um, there were a lot of unique challenges with coming here this year. Um, at one point we had Fokker from the info booth have to rush over to amateur CTF as an electrical, electrical line caught fire. Um, we, we had the war drive people get in trouble with hotel security and everybody was freaking out. This was, this was actually a very interesting year. I'm going home and sleeping for a couple weeks. Um, I'm going to try and get all this right. I, I have no alcohol up here, so there won't be any drinking for me if I screw this up, because I will. Um, first people I want to call up are the Wallace Sheep. You guys have seen the Wallace Sheep in years past. How's it going, everyone? I'm Riverside. I organize the Wall of Sheep. Uh, Eat the mic? Yes. Put the mic in okay. your mouth. I'm Riverside. I organize the Wall of Sheep. There's a bunch of people helping out. Um, put my, you know, putting a little old school into this. I, I wrote my notes on a paper plate. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to make this short and sweet. Um, as a wise bartender once said, uh, using unencrypted traffic is still known as a dipshit move. Uh, that was Dallas party last night. Uh, DEF CON has one of the most hostile networks in the world. <laughs> uh, you shouldn't just protect yourself at DEF CON. You should protect yourself everywhere in the world. Um, a major university, foreign and domestic government agencies, as well as quite a few attendees have joined the flock on the Wall of Sheep. Based on over 100 ca uh, captures this year, we see that there's obviously still the need for the Wall of Sheep. There are a few things that we need to throw out. Without these people, this would not have been possible. First and foremost, thanks to all the Wall of Sheep crew and all the people at the tables. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> thanks to all the, the DEF CON staff, especially the DC Knot crew, for providing us an awesome network this year. Special thanks to our new Sheep of the Year, not crew member, Squeak. Everyone, give Squeak a round of applause. Can we get Squeak up here? So, come collect your prize. There it is. I'll just leave that over there. <laughs> Come on, Squeak. 
All right, on a serious note, we really enjoy running the, the wall every year, but we'd rather not have to. Please don't be a sheep. Thank you. All right, Tim Dennehy, can I get you to come up here, please? All right, um, every year we have artwork submissions. Some of those end up on the shirts and stuff that you buy. This year we actually had some of that artwork end up on our own sh um, shirts. Yeah, you're going to want that. Um, Tim Dennehy actually um, created the design that is on all of the Goon staff shirts. Um, he's already gotten an ass load of prizes at this point. But um, he gets a black badge as well. And I'm um, just going to let him talk a minute about his, his design. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one of the things that's really cool to me about the, the contest is every year that I've been coming, I really believe that DEF CON is what we all make it. And I think that the more contests that people involve themselves in, the more we get to feel like we actually contributed to the con other than us just showing up. So that's my uh, feelings on it all. And thank you very much. All right, um, Jeff, do you want to talk about DC forums real quick? The cop man's gone. Ah, okay, we won't. All right, uh, Mr. Summit, Robert. Hackajar. Yes, the summit. All right, uh, Hackajar actually runs a um, fundraiser for the EFF where he gets a bunch of uh, people that think they're important together in a room with a lot of other people that think they're kind of important. And they pay to get in, and they buy lots of alcohol, they drink, they get drunk, and the money's given to EFF. So here's Hackajar. Uh, thank you very much. This is the second year of the summit. Uh, it's hosted by the Vegas 2.0 group. Uh, formerly, uh, we were part of the DC 702 group last year. The idea behind it is uh, one day I woke up and said, I need money for the EFF, but I don't have six grand. And so, but we know a lot of speakers and cool people out there, so we asked them to come out. Uh, you have uh, all these great speakers and great technologists and hackers out there that you want to talk to, but there's obviously uh, 8,000 people here and you can't find them, so we put them in a room for four hours for you to talk to them for 35 buck donation to the EFF, and that's what we did. This year we were able to uh, raise $2,306 for the EFF. And uh, last year we raised uh, $3,195 for the EFF. We didn't announce that last year, so we also raised that. So a grand total of about $6,000 from across the last two years. Uh, we hope to see all of you guys there next year. It'll grow, hopefully. We'll get more skyboxes as it grows uh, so you can talk to these guys and have a good time. Thank you very much. All right, so this next one's going to kind of shock the POC that I call up because I have not prepared him for this at all. So if you have cameras prepared, you might want to get a picture of this. Um, Eric Helmstead, can I get you to come up here, please? All right, Eric ran our dunk tank this year. This is typically run by uh, Frank. Uh, Frank had to take off this year. So Eric stepped up to the challenge and did a really, really good job this year. So I'm going to let him talk about it a minute. Do you have the actual total, or should I give that? I have the actual total. OK, all right. All right. I'm better prepared than he thinks I am. Yeah, that's, that's minus the euro and Canadian, right? Yeah, that is yeah, not so there you go. All right, I'm going to announce the top 10 um, dunkies first. Revenue generating donkeys. I won't. I was gonna dog the person that only brought in thirteen dollars, but I, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, number ten, bringing in one hundred fifty-four dollars, was the nurse. Number nine, bringing in one hundred sixty dollars, was Zach. Where's Zach? Number eight, bringing in one hundred sixty-five, was Amber. Number seven, bringing in 172, was X. 
Number six right here, Russ, bringing in 182 and a quarter. Number five, Adora, 190. Number four, Dark Tangent, 211. Number three, 252 for Pyro. Yeah. Number two for $270, Major Malfunction. And before I announce the top earner who, if you were here for uh, Hacker Jeopardy last night, you probably already know who it was. Uh, honorable mention to Mudge. He was only in the booth for 10 minutes and still brought in $88. Pretty impressive. So the number one earner last night after Hacker Jeopardy was Banshee, Vinyl Vanna, $370. So the grand total was $3,686 and 20 euro and 5 Canadian <laughs> and 25 cents. Thanks. So, so we decided to write a check to the FF instead of hand them handfuls of quarters and dimes and dollars. Is the FF representative here somewhere? Derek, are you here? Here he is. So these are, this is a representative of the EFF. This is what we're, we're doing it for them. And so uh, we decided to take the 3,686 odd dollars and round it up to 7,500. So. That's pretty impressive. I was really scared because there were some times that place was deserted. You guys know there's an outdoor hangout area, right? Um, <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, reopen the tank. Um, Proctor, can I get you up here for a couple minutes? Um, part of growing next year is we've got um, a couple new contest ideas we're going to toss out there. Proctor's going to toss one out there. I want to mention one more. Um, Wi-Fi shootout did not happen this year. Um, Dave Moore figures he's proved his point already. <laughs> um, but I have had a request to go ahead and do the um, Bluetooth shootout next year. So we're going to see what we can do with that next year. And then um, I'll let Proctor tell you about his idea. If you're on the forums at all, you will have heard about this already. Yeah, so we, uh, uh, I've always felt that there was one thing that was missing from DEF CON. And, and it's always bothered me, I've discussed this with DT, is there's just, there's no security vendors here. <laughs> and I know how much you all enjoy watching vendor presentations. So um, this contest idea was actually uh, uh, developed by Marcus Raynham and I while drinking at RSA. And we were thinking, we, we, we were thinking, we, we call it buzzword survivor. Now imagine if you will, 10 chair, well, that may be part of it. Imagine, if you will, 10 chairs. Imagine, if you will, 48 straight hours of vendor presentation. <laughs> and a $10,000 prize at the end. Now, we figure, you know, we're going to go for what we think would be the biggest cash prize. Uh, we're going to see if we can get more out of the vendors. The main reason I'm up here telling you guys about this is we're going to be discussing it on the forums over the next year. We've set up a special email address. If you think you might want to sit in one of those 10 chairs um, for the prize. Now, one of the things that we're, we're talking about is getting, uh, is, is potentially doing, if you make it 24 hours, getting sound of knowledge. So you don't have to miss it. And also, after sitting there for 48 hours, you also get to, uh, uh, we'll be ending it before the Saturday night parties. So you can go to the bathroom. Exactly. Well, the details are being worked out, but it is, <laughs> it is buzzword survivor at gmail.com. Come. So anyway, guys, if you're interested in participating, go, you can go to the forums. We'll be talking about it. We're going to try to put that together for next year. Thanks very much. All right. Uh, Joe Grant. 
right? Anybody know about the badges? Everybody has the badges, right? Joe Grand is actually the individual that created these. Um, he's been around a lot longer than a lot of the new attendees would ever guess. Um, <laughs> he's um, actually was kingpin with the loft. And there was actually a, a mini reunion here this year. But um, I'm going to let Joe talk about the badges. He ended up running a small contest on this this year. So um, Joe? All right, some of you guys might have noticed that we have uh, a badge with some active electronics on it. At least 6,000 of you guys have them, and the other 1,000 have some cardboard. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. We honestly had no idea that we'd get rid of that many. Um, so what, what happened on, uh, on Friday, I gave a little talk about just the whole process of designing the badge, um, and pretty much spur of the moment um, idea that, that Dark Tangent and I had was, why not create a contest? There's electronics on it. Let's see what you guys can do with, with two LEDs, a uh, microprocessor, a switch, and, and uh, a battery. And uh, so we announced this on Friday morning. And um, I s told everybody that if they were interested, I'd be judging at noon today. So they didn't really have a lot of time. Um, and we ended up with some really cool entries. Um, actually, we only had eight. So eight out of 6,000 is not good. Um, but it's better than zero. And uh, it turns out, actually, um, yeah, there's some really cool stuff. So I'm going to give out three awards. Uh, there was a, some of them you guys might have seen. Uh, a lot of people had modified their badges for extra LEDs and extra blinking and, and, and cool stuff like that. But I'm going to mention first an honorable mention, which I just thought was kind of cool. Um, Zane ended up making a, a flamethrower out of his badge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're out there, you can come up, Zane, and, and uh, you can demonstrate it if you want, or you can just get your prize and run away. But um, he had the flamethrower coming out the mouth, which was kind of cool. So honorable mention. Um, second place goes to Mark, uh, who is here somewhere. Um, Mark, as far as I know, had, had no real um, experience with a microchip processor. He'd never worked in it with an IDE before, a graphical you know, integrated uh, development environment, all those slick tools. He ended up um, hooking up some of the development tools that we had available in the eTechNet booth to the uh, in-circuit debugger port on the badge, ended up sucking the firmware down, modifying it, and uh, changed one of the modes of the LEDs to actually blink DEF CON 14 in Morse code. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> and then uh, my favorite, uh, which is why it's the winner, um, <laughs> is Scott, who's over here setting some stuff up right now. The interesting thing is Scott had no idea that there was even a contest going on. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, he, he, uh, he's an audiophile. He's a DJ. Um, and uh, he ended up seeing the badge. And, and without even knowing what was going on, he went to Fry's Electronics, picked up, picked up some parts, wanted to integrate it into some of his uh, audio circuitry. And Grifter ended up telling me on, on Friday or Saturday, he's like, you got to go check this guy out. So he, you know, he's up there, headphones on, just playing around with this thing. And I was just blown away. So he's setting up a demo. Um, essentially, what he did is he, he, he turned the LEDs into uh, event generators, which plugged into his um, analog synthesizer. So every time the LEDs go off, either the left or right channel will actually enable some sort of sounds. So as he's setting up, I guess we'll give a demo of, the, of Zane's flamethrower. <laughs> And the LEDs haven't caught on fire yet. That was me. Yeah, so the, I had the squirt gun. For those of you guys who remember, this is way cooler. <laughs> so that's the, that's the flamethrower. Yeah, he, uh, he's the honorable mention, so Russ has a prize for him somewhere. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, I think that's what he, I think that's what he got, yeah. It's a laptop condom. <laughs> cool. So is Mark actually here? Mark, if you're here, come up. Okay, he's waving, so he's coming up. Um, Scott, do you need more time to set up? Do you want, do you want more time to set up? 
Okay, it's as good as it's going to get. He doesn't have the rest of his equipment because he was actually still sleeping when I called him um, <laughs> from Caesar's party. Yeah, all night so, long. Sorry about that. Caesar's party, yeah. 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 <laughs> that was nice. But um, here, here's the demo. All right. Um, Tell what? Tell what? So, uh, yeah, w you know, this all started just with a conversation with, uh, with the OSVD, OSVDB guys. And I was talking to Toby, actually. And we're like trying to figure out just what the code might be on the fourth setting. Uh, it turns out it's random, so that sucked. Um, <laughs> so I thought I'd just try to use my ears and see at first if I could hear the code rather than see it. So I have two piezo tweeters installed that run between you know three volts. Uh, works like a chimp, uh, but it's really really annoying, and so I couldn't listen to it long enough to actually um, decipher the code. I didn't know if it was because it was random or just really annoying. Um, so then I decided, okay, I'm going to put a headphone jack in there and take a left and right channel for the left and right eyeballs. And then what I'm going to do is um, turn this into an envelope generator for this analog synthesizer I happen to bring along with me today. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, I didn't build this this weekend, don't worry. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, uh, and so what I thought I would try to do is see if I could hear the difference. Now, unfortunately, I don't know how to solder. <laughs> Um, I circuit bend at best, and um, I had a lot of help. Uh, probably 20, 30 people have helped me out with this. Um, up there in the sky lounges, we had all sorts of people. I mean, uh, for Richard, for hanging out with me at Fry's for three hours, where I figured out what the hell I needed to buy. Um, you know, I could go on, and I don't want to take up too much time. There's just a lot of people who have helped out with this, and it's really been a community hack, and I really like that. So. Um, I'm just going to get right to it and hope that everything is jacked the right way because I unplugged all this last night and just didn't there without hearing anything. Oh, the, okay, on the back, thanks. Um, really hard to see, of course. Uh, there's two piezo tweeters, and basically I just circuit bend because I don't know chips or programming or anything like that. So um, I just take a small wire and touch different areas to see what I can hear with my sound to find out where the channels were. And then I, after I was able to do that, uh, I just got together with a soldering gun and, and some folks to help me learn how to solder. The problem is most of the joints in here are still cold solder joints. And then after dancing last night for like 12 hours and using this thing at a party, um, one of the joints is broken. So now I only have one of the two channels for modulation. But it's enough to generate sound to get the idea. Um, if I were able to hold this little wire and connect it there while I do this at the same time, um, well, heck, that'd be harder to do than everything else I've done. So uh, maybe I can get this. The maybe. Yeah. Find out my soldering iron. This little wire has to, that fat cold solder joint right there. Yeah, target that. For the red. Yeah, okay. the red on that fat ball of solder. Okay. Um, so uh, let's see if we have just general volume here. And uh, well. It's an event generator, so the only way to tell if there's sound is to hit the button, and your guess is as good as mine if this is going to work. Good job. Good job. <laughs> there we go. I think the other thing is I've gone through like eight batteries because I'm pushing two pieces of tweeters and analog out over attenuation. So I know enough to know that I'm out of juice. So uh, that's the demo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so actually, I, I'm, I have some videos of, of, uh, of this that I'm going to put up on my website. And it will probably end up on the DEF CON forums and stuff. And it's way, way cool. Um, we're going to end up giving out a microchip development kit so he can uh, maybe learn how to solder and do some other stuff. <laughs> so, so. Okay, just wanted to say thanks to Joe for designing such a kick-ass badge. <laughs> I mean, think about it, all the things you could do with that thing. If I can actually use that kit to create this, turn this thing to an oscillator, then I'll actually have like some serious gear. <laughs> oh, here. <laughs> so here's this. And here's Mark, by the way. So he gets the prize too, and Russ has it. So the, the one last thing I want to do, um, I've actually wanted to do this since we started talking about designing the badge, is we're going to, hopefully if someone can control the house lights, we're going to turn the lights off. And if all you guys can like turn on your badge and cover your faces, because we're going to take a picture, um, or put on your mask or whatever, turn them on and just hold them up, because I think it's going to be a really kick-ass picture. And I don't know where the light switch is. Oh, there we go. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome.
We need some like love songs going on here. <laughs> That is all. Thank you, guys. And stay tuned. We might have some other hacking contest next year. Don't expect a badge, but it might be something. All right, so next up, we have Fufus from the Coffee Wars. Man, there were a lot of freaking submissions this year. You guys like your coffee as much as your alcohol. Good afternoon. Every year, Coffee Wars is beset with some new challenges. This year, there was just a little confusion about when the con would be starting. I'm not sure if any of you noticed that. Um, but behind the scenes, uh, Sherdlou and I were actually marooned in an Albertsons parking lot on an ill-conceived quest for water and cups. So it was, it was quite a challenge. But every year, Coffee Wars triumphs over those little adversities, and the magic happens, so in spite of it all. And as always, we owe thanks to many. Uh, Russ, in particular, uh, helped with all the pre-con organization, but uh, more importantly, he really smoothed things over for us when the delays started happening. So thank you, man. Um, thanks also to the DEF CON forums for helping whip up the pre-con enthusiasm, and of course, Dark Tangent, who did his bit by supplying two of the most unusual entries. <laughs> Usually, we only announce two winners, but these coffees set kind of a new standard. Um, after DT's entries, the next most extensive, uh, pa, the next most expensive coffee was Turd Foo's Panama Carmen Estate, uh, which was at a respectable $24 per pound. DT's cheap entry was $80 a pound. <laughs> but uh, we want to really honor his expensive one because we'll probably never see anything like it again. Uh, it was $180 a pound. The Pooh Maximus uh, Arabica entry had the lowest bang for the buck score by at least a factor of 10. So. <laughs> So we have an award for you, and I don't know what is funnier, the fact that this steel thermos comes in a protective leather, leather case, or the fact that it is actually an official Lockheed Martin steel thermos. Well done, sir. I just have to say, after Paul Proctor told me about the coffee beans that are processed through the poo of these tree cats, I had to have some. <laughs> Yeah, because who wouldn't? Um, so now for some, <laughs> now for some more uh, serious data. Uh, we rate coffee entries on a score of 1 to 10 in various different categories. Uh, bang for the buck represents the highest ratio of overall approval to the cost per pound. And so we've never awarded a prize in this category before, but this year we had a lot of uh, people who were doing home roasting, and we thought we should recognize this uh, rapidly growing means of getting great coffee for cheap. So uh, this win year's winner has placed highly in the past, and we have a, a mechanical creature called a sawzaw, which will probably destroy everything in your house. Uh, Cubit, with uh, Brian's Panamanian Peaberry Perfection at $4 per pound, broke the 1.0 barrier in uh, Bang for the Buck at 1.1. The second place entry was 0.82. If you're here, come get your special prize, sir. All right, and lastly, uh, our winner hails from my home state and submitted beans from a well-loved local roaster, uh, which apparently I have been underestimating these past years. So uh, the field seemed very even, and all of the judges uh, didn't realize that there was one entry that was pulling ahead of the rest. It stood out above all others. Um, so our prizes, we wanted to give this uh, contestant a round-the-world trip, um, but we couldn't afford that, so we got a round-the-world trip courtesy of my favorite roaster, three pounds of excellent coffees from around the world. Uh, we also have 
from No Starch Press donated a VI mug, so if you're having trouble remembering how to search and replace while you're drinking coffee. And then we also have a fashionable insulated mug in Hacker Black. Um, Steve Tornio with uh, Altera Delta Mud at $9.45 a pound, rated 7.29. The second place entry was 6.43, so we won by a fair margin. Come up, sir, and claim your prize if you're here. All right, if any of you knows Steve, tell him to find me. Otherwise, um, I'll get it to him back in Wisconsin. Thanks. Oh, you're going to post the results? Yeah, oh, yes. Results will be posted both in the forums and on coffeewars.org as soon as I finish the write-up. Usually takes me a couple of weeks. I love complaints, so send them right away. <laughs> All right, uh, beverage cooling. Where are you? There he comes. This is really dangerous. They tried to set up by the pool. There were some security issues with that. Locke, you okay with him pulling this off for a second? Too late. <laughs> I asked. Okay, how's everyone doing? Having a good time? All right, I'm Deviant. You may have seen me in the Lockpick Village much of the weekend, but I also ran this little known contest called the Beverage Cooling Contraption Contest. Inspired by, if everyone's ever seen Mythbusters, there was that episode where they wanted to get beer down to drinkable temperature, and they didn't do too well. They were actually self critical. They're like, wow, I thought we could have done better. And I was like, DEF CON knows a hell of a lot more about techie shit and beer, so we could kick their ass. <laughs> I was really proud of, of everyone who came out. I'm actually, I'm particularly proud of uh, just, everyone else has said this, but the crowd has been really great this year. The vibe was amazing for the new space. We, we kind of roll with the punches really well, and to thank people for that, I have extra swag that I'm just going to start flinging. So if you're up front, you're kind of lucky, or you're not because some of it's pointy. <laughs> so, you know, shirts. And we have some, uh, any like old school gamers in the house, some emulators, every collection ever of uh, Nintendo and Genesis. Yeah. Oh, there's more of them. We didn't have the movie channel this year, but you've seen projected on some of the walls the filler content, the edited G.I. Joes and music videos and everything. Um, Tierra was a great guy. We, uh, we helped him recode a lot of it. So we have some DVDs of that. And this, one, this one's hard for me to part with. This is probably going to go to one of the winners. Uh, I don't really decide any strong, strong winner. They just kind of pick the prizes out and work it out. If anybody caught the mini bosses set last night, it was it was amazing. Somebody's getting a signed mini bosses CD, so that is going to be terrific. And that was going to be you know this plus some Simpsons beer signs, which have been at Civiac's house since last year, and we still don't have them here. Those are going to be they were going to be the grand prize until we found up in our collection of locks that we had purchased like just on. We just like wiped you know, a bunch off the shelves at Home Depot before we came here. Somebody was picking one of the locks and he said, hey, is this a, is this a joke or something? Did you plan this? And I said, what are you talking about? I, I wish I could take credit for this because it's badass, but we actually have a master lock that the combination is 31, 33, 7. <laughs> So someone's getting that. All right, really fast. Everyone, everyone did great. Here's the rundown. Iatis, Iatis actually had the, the most crazy pimped out extreme cooling contraption. He cooled so much that he overshot his target, his target though. So he was producing ice in some of the beer, but we recognize that. Uh, what else we have? 
bus prof, if anyone saw the professor who actually had computer cases put together and used them as his cooler, it was really cool. He had, you know, his ports on the back were beer can lids and beer caps from all around the world. The Wicked Awesome Beer Ninjas came back again this year. Uh, they didn't use liquid nitrogen, but theirs was one of the few contraptions that could take a whole load immediately without any spillage, so they get like the mouthful recognition there. And the big, the big hometown showdown was the two Vegas teams this year, and everyone was curious how, how it was going to work out. Uh, there was DC 702, Brian and Rob, and there was Hackajar's crew with uh, Vegas 2.0. So the actual, actual winner was Vegas. I'm sorry, was DC 702 because they cooled consistently right to the range we needed, and you guys did amazing. Come on, they have, they have amazing, amazing stuff. Yeah, they took a beer, because we, you know, these were beers that started out at room temperature indoors, and then we were out there for like three hours. So they were cooking. By the end of the day, they ran a beer from 92 down to 36 degrees in like two minutes, and it was very nice. But Hackajar really gets special credit because his was the most powerful cooling I'd ever saw. Even though he didn't get it down to the target range, the end of the day, the beers were 108 degrees. <laughs> And he dropped them over 65 degrees in temperature in two minutes' time. So, like, that's amazing. Everyone, I always love seeing the designs. I'd love to see, come on out, you know, even just, you know, watch, because you get a lot of free beer. And <laughs> I appreciate it very much. I appreciate everyone who lets me do this and everyone here. All right, Thorne um, took over the war driving contest this year. I'd like to give him kudos for dealing with law enforcement. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Um, I'll be real brief here. We uh, had two teams enter this year, and uh, it was uh, Renderman and Team I Want a Fucking Jacket. And <laughs> the uh, past couple of years winner uh, team pre-kill, uh, preset kill limit. And we ran two contests. Uh, the first one, we kind of ran into a little bit of a problem with security. They got freaked out by antennas going by, big antennas on people's shoulders. <laughs> so um, we got shut down for a little while. That was okay actually from one standpoint because we had battery pack on one of our units die. So we kind of had a reset anyways. We worked it out with security. Everything came out okay. We got limited down to uh, just the convention area, but we were willing to work around that. So um, we went ahead, we ran the Running Man contest, and the Running Man was found in 15 minutes, 19 seconds, by uh, a team I want a fucking jacket. <laughs> and uh, then we ran the Fox and the Hound. And the Fox uh, did not run real far this year because we were kind of limited. Uh, it just ran under the stage in the contest area. And the teams took an hour and 15 minutes or so to find the Fox. They walked around it like, oh, well, uh, 20, 30 times. <laughs> um, so we had them finally find it. Then they had the box. They had to own the box, which was just a simple WRT54G. Um, the password was printed on the box. <laughs> Neither team could figure that out. <laughs> it was a big white label. But they, they both missed it. Um, after fiddling around with it, team preset kill limit did, in fact, brute force the word. They got in. They owned the box. So we had two teams that had each one. Uh, one thing, we had a tiebreaker today with some questions, and in the end, Team Preset Kill Limit did win again for the third year running. Big hand for them. So all in all, uh, we've got prizes for each of the teams, but uh, considering that both teams were not able to actually see uh, what had occurred, the prizes this year are optical. We have binoculars so that maybe they can read things from now on. So, Eric, Phil, you guys here? And team, I want a fucking jacket. If you have, okay, there's Render. You guys get the big binoculars, thank you. 
and you get the little binoculars. Thanks. Thanks a lot, folks. Appreciate it. And I just want to give my thanks to uh, Chris for uh, giving me the contest here this year. I had a lot of fun. Uh, didn't get off completely the way we wanted, but we're going to do better next year. Thank you very much. Uh, just a quick note on that. The info booth is never the fox, okay? I, they stared at the info booth for, I swear to God, 15 to 20 minutes. They tried to go through our stuff. Snakebite was about to jump out of the booth and let them have it, all right? If you've ever seen an angry Asian woman, yeah, so um, info booth's off limits for that for next year. All right, so for, um, we had a new contest this year. We figured we'd give it a shot. Um, Mystery Box Challenge. All right, lost. This thing was awesome. How many people saw it or participated in this? Okay, would you want him to do it again next year? Yeah. All right, so here's Lost. Maybe. Thanks, Russ. Um, when I first came up with the idea for this contest, I was actually talking with Cotman, who unfortunately isn't here on the IRC channel. And I said, man, we have all these hardware contests and nobody's entering. Uh, case in point, mystery, uh, net, -app. Net, net apps. We just had a call for it and nobody showed up. Nobody wants to do a build before they come to con. And I said, how can we get hardware in people's hands? And I thought, well, let's do a build at con. But I approached it as a mystery box and did not tell anyone what the contest was. Now, if you think selling a new contest to people is difficult, try doing one where they don't know what the contest is. I had 15 teams sign up. I had to cap it at 15 because I didn't want to build any more of these boxes. And I don't think my wife wanted the living room littered with things that looked like bombs any longer because she didn't want to have to <laughs> explain to friends that would come over why there were these little makeshift boxes all over the house. Anyway, just a few key points, stuff that was fun. Just like uh, Thorne's contest, I actually gave the teams the solution to the problem four times during the contest. And the team that actually made it to the final stage first didn't win because they didn't get that. And it was given to them as the first clue. Um, I had nine teams finish out of 15. Six didn't even complete the challenge. Next year, we're going to actually make it tougher. I want to see about a 50% success rate. Um, I'd like to call up uh, Team Nostromo crew, third place. You'll notice that uh, our good friend Joe Grand is on this team. <laughs> I have, to, I have to jab him about this. Joe and his team were up at the, at the final stage of the contest. Joe actually designed the RFID reader that I used, and I, I had great joy in watching his own hardware defeat him. <laughs> so for uh, third place, I have some uh, prizes. The microcontroller kits. Um, Jinx Hackware was kind enough to donate some t-shirts. You can see it was a pretty big team. Uh, second place was Team Halibut. Hurry, guys. Hurry, where are you at? Team Halibut. I'd also like to point something out here. The team that actually won first place didn't know they were entering this competition until they got to con. They were walking by my booth. I had 15 boxes. One team didn't show up. And these guys were standing in front of the table. And I said, hey, guys, you want to compete? And they said, sure. And they actually won the competition. And I think that's very apropos for a hacker conference. So, First place, apparently named Team Last Minute. Where are you guys at? Come on, hurry, hurry. Renderman was actually kind enough in the Church of Wi-Fi. They donated a uh, 100 gig drive. <laughs> Full of prawn. <laughs> yeah! I've got two robotics kits for them. Uh, sorry, I gave out all the t-shirts. Oh yeah, that's right, I got the cool magnet. 
Just in case you're all wondering, because I'm sure a lot of people looked at the website and said, what the hell is this thing? They were all given a box that had two locks on the outside and a third that was covered with an LCD. There was a circuit on the outside with wires that they had to disconnect in a proper order. If they did that, they received a number. They also had to pick through the locks. There was actually a third lock that was left unlocked, and they picked it shut. <laughs> hey, we weren't the only ones that did that. They didn't realize that the box was unlocked because also on the inside was a neodymium magnet that um, most of you know your lock picks are ferrous and trying to pick a lock with a rather strong neodymium magnet behind the lock is not an easy task. I would like to give special bonus points to the teams that actually extracted the pin out of the hinge in the back and bypassed the locks altogether. <laughs> I'd also like to give honorable mention to the team that used the Dremel tool and was throwing 10-foot sparks in the contest area. <laughs> I can say thank you to everyone that participated. It was more fun for me than it was for them, I'm sure. I went from team to team and just watched the stuff that these guys were doing. It was crazy. There will be a write-up in about two weeks. Um, it'll also be posted in the DEF CON forums if you're interested and you want to know more about it. Um, I guess popular demand. I'll do it again next year if you yeah. guys want to see it. Oh, yeah. 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 Also really quickly, we did a breakout session with the robot build and we took donations for the EFF, so I'll also be giving the cash from that to the EFF. So. All right, virus. All right, so here's here's a cool thing. Um, anybody remember the old CTF where everyone just came and kind of set up their own thing and beat on each other? Okay. Um, we kind of switched like four or five years ago to this whole team thing, and it left a lot of us hanging out there because I suck. And um, Virus X came up last year, last minute, and kind of thought, well, you know, let's give it a shot. Um, last year went okay, had some hardware problems, but this year it went really well and I'm extremely happy. We had 106 people sign up for this before they got here. So um, it turned out really well. Without further ado, here is Virus X. Yeah, yeah, yeah last year was interesting because like, we came up with the contest about mm, two months before con and said, yeah, sure, let's, let's do it. You know, it's a cool idea. So we hosted it over Wi-Fi. Yeah, bad idea. <laughs> that, so last year uh, nobody won because nobody cracked the box and like we had four teams show up on the spot and two of them couldn't get connected because the Wi-Fi kept getting hacked and it was this horrible mess. So after con last year we all got together in this big group and said okay do we want to just can the idea or do we actually want to like do it for real? So we said okay fine we'll do it. So we, you know, we did it and prepped and figured maybe 20 people would show up because that would be a massive increase from last year. And then I had 106 people on my list and I got this email from Russ saying, no, you have to like do all this crap and like, you know, you have to have projectors and it has to be fancy and you're going to have press. And yeah, I, you know, damn near had a baby. So first, um, the fact that we pulled it off was a freaking miracle. I had a bunch of people show up. I didn't even know throughout the year. Uh, my crew needs to come up here and get some respect because I, I would have cracked under the presser for sure. We, we, we need to get him around the hand because this wouldn't have happened without them. For real. So decent enough for nine. Uh, what the contest was, was if any of you remember when Root Foo used to run CTF, it was, yeah, everybody had a box, uh, it had stuff running on it. Hack a service, keep a service, as long as you hack it, you get points. This is the same contest, only we had all the boxes, and it was supposed to be amateur, so we made some of them really easy. <sighs> we had ten boxes, nobody got past level six. So apparently they weren't that easy. Um, we had 100 and we had 31 teams registered. We had about three of those, what, three or four? Four of those? Four of those show up and a bunch of other random people that wanted to play, so we let them play. And uh, we had three main folks, so I guess uh, I'll give out my prizes before I shut up. Um, third play, who's third place? Dirty, uh, Dirty South. Uh, they already bailed, but we gave them a prize, so we'll just clap for them because they were, they were there. And uh, second place was uh, Sudors. So if you guys are out there, 
come here, get your prize. We got we got prizes. Uh, there we go. Yeah, these guys came in late too. They weren't registered, and they just walked in and kind of did it. So, huh? Technique? What? <laughs> yeah, that's theirs. And got this. Oh yeah. Took you a while to find that out. Oh yeah. We we. So, so not getting some of these boxes was embarrassing because like level seven, we rigged it so you could see the source code if you went to the right URL and nobody got it. Okay. <laughs> and first place by a rather massive margin uh, was uh, WCSC, AKA White Hatters. I'm pretty sure they're still around. So if you guys could come up and uh, get your big box. Yeah, a real interesting fact about these guys is they were the ninth qualifier, apparently, for Kinshoto. So they were like the one team that didn't get in. So they figured, hey, we'll do amateur CTF. That should be easy enough, right? Yeah, no. There was like a massive tug of war for the first two places all game. I mean, we had a while where like we had one box that was half owned by both teams. So they were just running scripts to take points from each other for like two hours. The scoreboard was just going back and forth. It was nuts. So. Uh, I'm going to post all the scores on the site, so, and I'll have a full rundown of all the hacks that were there and all the stuff that people got and didn't got and what we're going to do next year to fix some problems, but yeah, I'm going to shut up so people can finish. Um, Thank you. Yeah. All right, Sid. All right, um, the scavenger hunt was here again this year. Um, very disturbing to most of the hotel staff who had not seen this before. I apologize. Come on up. Hey guys, you're going to have to cut me a little slack. Uh, the voice left Friday. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that participated, everybody that generated any sort of buzz about the scavenger hunt this year. As a lot of you may know, I won a lot in the past and once Grifter and all the guys in the 801 stepped back looked for somebody to take it over and it was me uh, had a great time putting the list together was really painful and took a lot of hangovers uh, I have no idea how much hell I put the 801 guys through while I had it sorry Grifter um, had about seven teams that competed this year I'm looking at arranging some stuff to make it a lot easier for smaller teams to compete next year. Uh, just like to give away a Def, or Def G with 43.94. Actually already got their prizes and took off. Uh, second place was Om with 91.95. And first place was Vegas 2.0. Hackajar's team once again with 9,450 points. It's about time, come on up. And if Team Om is here, come on up too. We've got, got your swag. So like everybody to know, we've got boxes of swag. I do a lot of work to get this stuff together. We've got a fully functional Teddy Ruxpin. We've got laser discs. We have eight tracks. We have a lot of really good stuff too. We got Defcon windbreakers. You guys are nice enough. Everyone in the vendor area was great. I don't think anyone in there did not donate a grip to us. I'd like to thank everybody in the vendor area, all of our competing teams, and uh. I'll turn it over to Hackajar. He's been waiting to get this mic for this challenge for uh, quite some time. Hello again. After three years, we finally made it to the first place. It was pretty humiliating being the local team and getting second place two years in a row. We're supposed to have a grip on this. Uh, I want to say that uh, we finally got this damn black patch. <laughs> and a lot of beers and getting people drunk and all that stuff finally got it to us. Uh, we'd like to thank all the goons that accepted the free beer. And uh, we, uh, this contest, you guys really need to sign up for this. They really need to keep it going. Uh, a lot of the other contests are very interesting technical contests, but this is a life hack contest. You're a great hacker at life and figuring out things and problem solving. Uh, it's my favorite contest here and all the team members as well. And we fought with other teams for many, many years. Uh, pitted battles and everything, but when it really comes down to is you're a life hacker to do this. And it's fun and exciting. And 
the hardest thing was explaining to them why they shouldn't kick me out of the hotel for jumping into the pool with rollerblades and a trench coat. <laughs> so they said, well, okay, you're the only team we won't kick out, but if somebody else jumps in here, they're so gone. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're, we're really proud uh, of this contest and we're so happy that they kept it going strong year after year and uh, just because we won it this year does not mean that we're going to like not defend it next year so come and take us on next year thank, thank you very much <laughs> and last, lastly I gotta, I gotta get some mad greets out to all the Vegas 2.0 guys that helped out uh, Holly uh, Ripshi, Packet Baron, myself, Hackajar, and of course the 503 guy who's our goon in the hole, Jake. There's Jake over there. And they didn't mention it because he didn't know there was a contest, but he actually hacked his badge to turn off all TVs when he walks by, just for the record. So, uh, so thank you very much again, and uh, we'll have a great year and see you next year. Thank you. All right, um, one of the uh, experiments and contests we started three years ago was the Robot Wars. Um, the first year we had one entry, it won. <laughs> Last year we had two entries, which, you know, we were all really excited about. Um, Kalahar has done an absolutely fantastic job keeping this contest going and bringing it to a level that everybody can learn and make this stuff happen as we go. So I'm going to hand this over to Kalahar. Um, he didn't get any sleep at all last night, and he feels like crap, I'm sure. So give him hell. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this was the third year. We had six contestants. Uh, the, this year's contest was to create an airsoft gun which could shoot down autonomously uh, 30 targets that were uh, set up vertically 10 feet away. Um, uh, the trick was, of course, it had to be entirely autonomous. So as soon as you click start, that's it. There's no more human control allowed. Uh, so I was very impressed. Six teams, all of them had working robots that were able to shoot down most of the targets. Uh, so we have prizes here for the top two teams. Um, second place was a tie between Irvine Underground and EVA. They were able to shoot down about 90% of the targets before the five minute team limit, uh, uh, time limit. So they can come up. <laughs> uh, just get them next to you. Uh, and in first place, we have Team Octopi from Utah. You guys can come up. Uh, they were able to tie in their, uh, their college senior project uh, to a DEF CON contest. So <laughs> big props to them to mixing the two worlds. Uh, uh, no, this is first place, so you get your backpack and um, the neoprene. Uh, they were able to shoot down all 30 targets in 37.7 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so um, next year's contest, it's going to be a lot of the same stuff, more airsoft, more shooting. Uh, so we're hoping to double the entries again to hopefully 12. So if anyone wants to sign up, we'll be on the forum, forums and at defconbots.org. Thank you. Who's first? What was the hardest part of what? Um, was it mostly vision? Um, yeah, all the teams used cameras to track what the targets were. The targets were one inch, two inch, and three inch. Um, lit with an IR beacon in the center and uh, tying those into the computer and the vision and uh, getting the gun to track to where all those different targets were um, was very difficult, but all the teams were able to do it. Anything else? Third place is not here. Um, no, they're not here. Okay, thanks. Are you going to have enough video up online somewhere? Oh, yeah. All the video and desktop bots that work. Never compete against that. All right, defconbots.org. They're going to have the videos of the competition. If you did not see it, you have to watch this. It was absolutely amazing. Although I found it a little bit ironic that there were a whole bunch of liberal hackers in a hotel designing um, 
acquisition systems for military. <laughs> okay, um, Doc, lockpick. Lockpick went off great again this year, extremely popular. Um, he's got tons of really cool swag in five minutes. Hi, I'm Doc, and uh, about four years ago, Kai Goth and I had this brilliant idea. We'd do a contest, and somehow we came up with lock picking. I don't know how, um, but it has really taken off over the last four years. So now we have done officially done LP Con 4 inside of DEF Con 14. And so we're always 10 years behind, but that's okay. We can deal with it. Um, First off, I'd like to, uh, as I'm talking, I'd like for Sam, Chris, and uh, Press to go ahead and come up. All right. And uh, if you want, let's go ahead and have uh, Warelock and uh, Omicron come up as well. Um, first off, I have to thank the people that make this possible. It's not one person. It has to be a team of people. And so specifically, I want to thank um, Tool USA. Uh, if you're a Tool USA member and was helping out, please stand up. I want to recognize you because it was impossible to do it without you. Great job. Also, the guys from Lock Sport International, please stand up. Thank you. Uh, the majority of our prizes here were donated by the University of Advancing Technology. That's why there's a couple of robots up here. <laughs> um, again, we, we try to make it fun. We try to make it interesting. Uh, we had, for the first time ever, we did what was called a lock picking village. And it was an area that was set up in one of the sky boxes where you could go up there and learn how to pick a lock. Uh, there was seminars given by both uh, LSI and Tool USA folks. Uh, there were discussions, there were people just sitting around teaching each other, and it was an incredible form uh, just to learn how to pick locks. And if you think physical security is not important in our world today, <clears throat> we walked down to do the first contest of the speed competition, and within five minutes, Eric was running around saying our room had been picked open and that people were in there playing. <laughs> so... Thank you for not stealing anything while you were in there. All right, uh, the first contest I'm going to go through is the new contest we did, which was the points competition. Okay? The points competition was run up in the skybox. There were 25 locks, out of, and there were a possibility of 705 points you could get. Don't ask me why other five points came from. Um, there were 56 people that signed up for that. All right. We had at least 50 people in that room at any given time. Um, the, we have three top finishers for that, and I have prizes for each of those. Do I have everybody? Okay. Um, the first is the third place finisher for the points competition is Sam Duffy. Sam had 405 points. Um, he opened 17 locks. The, the third place finisher gets a lovely bag and also they finish third which is an incredible place to be out of 56 but maybe a little more practice would help a little bit and just to bring it up a little bit so second place in points um, 430 points 18 locks third and second were separated by finishing one lock um, Chris Pinnacle. Okay. Chris, I should have said this before. Chris got a key logger. Okay, do legal things with that, just just for practice. All right, <laughs> it's a 128k uh, key logger. Um, and the first place finisher with 22 locks out of 25 and 550 points is going to get that lovely Raptor sitting right there, all right, is uh, WSB Press.
Okay. Now the next portion of this, um, the speed competition. All right. We are going to probably rename the speed competition, which in this case, the last couple years has been an oxymoron. Um, probably the skills competition because there wasn't a lot of speed behind it, but it certainly did take a lot of skills to get through the locks that uh, we had put into place. There were 38 people that signed up for this competition. We ran it in three rounds, obviously 38 to start, 16 to the next round, and four to the finals. Um, to make it to the finals, it took a lot of hard work. Uh, so I'm going to quickly run through who the uh, winners are. And uh, the first place finisher gets the black badge. Okay, this is a black badge event. Okay, so third place is our good friend, Warlock. Warlock also got a lovely bag and a uh, extra board uh, to uh, to practice his lock picking skills on. Second place uh, is WSB Press, and he's going to need a bigger suitcase to go home. Um, he's going to get a uh, some spy gear that was donated by UAT. And last but not least, um, somebody that perseveres, uh, even through cussing and anger as the locks just will not come unlocked. Um, it took 26 minutes to get through three locks that were on our lock boards. Okay, these were Home Depot specials, specifically purchased, hoping they would be easy. <laughs> um, whoever made them had a good day because they were not easy. But it got done, and in 26 minutes, Omicron had finished uh, everything. And he gets this lovely uh, Robo Sapien, thank you, Russ, um, as his prize. And he's going to need a bigger suitcase, too. So. As I, as I said before, the winner of this event does get a black badge, and that goes to Omicron. All right, um, that's it for them. Who's uh, Nick, G. Mark, who's doing Hacker Jeopardy? All right. And then CTF. Yeah. Nick Farr, you here? Okay, we did Hacker Jeopardy again for the 12th year out of 14. Still not bad, got a winning record here. Anybody make it last night? Yeah. Anybody catch vinyl at Vanham out at the uh, dunk tank? EFF gets to contribute to that. So this event contributed more to EFF than anyone else's, so we think that was pretty good. We ran, normally have three qualifying rounds going to the final Hacker Jeopardy round. We lost two hours, you know, at the beginning of the first day. We had to eat up the last hour at the end of it because we were the last event of the day. So we skipped round two. So round one, the first set winners was no vodka for win. The uh, next round then, the winners there were IPV sex. And so in the final round, they played Deus Sex Machina, IPV sex, no vodka for win, and the returning champions, the Nymphs, which consists of Bobcat, Foofus, and Billy Goto. Well, this year, yeah, question, or are you looking for a book? You just bought it. This man sold to the man over here. In a, pursuing their quest for a second consecutive victory and for Bobcat, his fourth victory, they also were able to do some other things as well. The Nymphs, with a final total of 8,703 points, broke the all-time record for Hacker Jeopardy. They also earned the Humberdink Award by consuming 19 beers 
between them in the 50 minutes of competition. Bobcat, Fufus, Billy Goto, you here? Come on down. These guys know way too much about way too many trivial things. Like deep crack. <laughs> yes. And they wait, know way too much about the other issues, which we're not going to discuss in a public well, forum. They, they got four out of five on anal. <laughs> so anyway, we need to increase the gene pool next year for teams. So if you think you got what it takes and you know something, come on out and try out for Hacker Jeopardy. We'll make it a lot better competition next year. So. So we have a black badge as a presentation that we'll give to Billy Goto, to Bobcat to add to your increasing collection, and to Fufus. What is your winning technique? We drink a lot. And when that fails? We drink even faster. <laughs> drink a lot, drink faster. It works. Anything to say to uh, Well, it's important to keep your mouth shut. When <laughs> Actually, I'd like to thank uh, Wynn, Nick Farr, and G-Mark for putting on the game, doing a great job. Banshee was the best vinyl banner ever. <laughs> and Ashley and Alanka working the beers, thank you very much. And I would also like to thank the other teams for not vomiting on us this year. That was <laughs> special. <laughs> no blackberries were harmed in the production of this event. We do have one uh, special honorable mention to one of the teams. No vodka for win. You guys here? All right, they're back there. Don't get too excited. You guys get the Buffalo Bills Award for the most consecutive losses in a championship game. Give me three books. They're gone. They're gone. The Wynn Win had something special to give to you, but we've already given it away to somebody else. So <laughs> this is like combat. There are no points for second place. Come on back next year. Give it another try. Thank you very much. Win. thanks for all the great stuff you do. Thank you, everybody. Come on out next time for Hacker Jeopardy. It'll be bigger and better than ever. All right, last one. Yay. Um, Visigoth, Ken Shoto. Gentlemen. All right, uh, CTF was very cool this year. Yep. Yeah. This will be it for the contest. If you have ideas for next year, please email me, russ at defcon.org. We'll take care of you. Hey, y'all. So, so first of all, we are all completely exhausted, and I am mildly incoherent. So if I don't make a whole lot of sense up here, just kind of ignore me. <laughs> first of all, we would like to give a shout out to the people who actually make this possible, because we are all a bunch of incoherent specialists who can't handle normal day-to-day -day things. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kinshoto Gophers in the back. So for this year's contest, we had 130 teams sign up to play in the qualifying rounds, which was sort of Jeopardy style, involved uh, several different categories of challenges, forensics. We had a category called Ponage, which basically involved actually taking over remote services on systems across the internet, which was kind of cool. We had cut service providers once because one of them completely disconnected our service when they saw all kinds of stuff going by that they thought was scary. So. It came down to, uh, to several teams being able to make it in the game. Out of 129 teams, we, uh, we qualify seven teams, and of course, the previous year's winner. So, this year's challenges in the real game, the, uh, the platform of choice, every team had to both defend and attack a Solaris 10 server. <laughs> All running completely custom, or mostly custom, applications written by us that they had to reverse engineer, develop or find exploits, and also then develop exploits that actually land across this chaotic network. 
all in a weekend. So, the challenges this year ranged pretty heavily, some of them on purpose, some of them by accident. Um, we had some services that had keys only existing in memory, so you had to uh, not just spin up a shell, but actually read out of memory instead of executing bin sh because your process memory goes away. We had uh, teams having to submit their stolen tokens over DTMF analog lines that we gave them. The first thing they all did is run out and buy modems. So, for this year's contest, in seventh place, we'd like to give a shout out to an ad hoc team that uh, took the place of a no-show team and actually uh, did pretty well. They actually landed a couple of the binary services and that kind of thing. They're, um, we, we give them special thanks basically for stepping in. The game kind of goes out of balance when people don't show up. So, in uh, sixth place, we'd like to give a special shout out to the East Sea. Are they here? EC, are you guys here? Oh yeah, they're back there. They're all the way in the back. So this team flew all the way here from South Korea to play CTF. And uh, they were um, basically the first com like completely international team that we're aware of. This might be an incorrect statistic, correct me if I'm wrong. The other thing that they had going on is their rock star didn't get a visa. They had him VPN'd in it, like remote from South Korea. Coming in in fifth place is the team that Ken Shoto all collectively decided had the best name, which is the team Our Wives Are Pissed. <laughs> they told me that they had to win because it would be the only way that they wouldn't be so pissed. This is their first time playing and uh, they did a fantastic job. In fourth place, we have the ever-present School of Root, previous year's winners and uh, most stolen from this year. So, big shout out to them. Where's the school at? Nah? Oh, there they are, all back there. Why is it that all the CTF people are in the back? We're more evil! <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. In third place, we have Shellfish, last year's winners. They were like the breakthrough leads. So the way CTF works is you steal tokens, you overwrite tokens, and you submit to us proof that you are capable of landing these particular services. So the teams that are the first ones to uh, discover and successfully exploit particular vulnerabilities get special points. Because in previous years, one of the things that we noticed when we played was that we would do all this work and then develop something really cool and throw it, and then another team would capture it and replay it, and like we'd get like one scoring cycles worth of tokens, and then everybody else would be doing the same thing. So breakthroughs are uh, a critical component of the game, and uh, Shellfish was by far and away the, uh, the, the breakthrough lead. So big shout out to Giovanni and them. In second place, we have the team with the most overwrites. They were also the only team to discover a vulnerability that we completely did not intend. The analog bridges that we were using to submit stolen tokens were talking back to an asterisk, asterisk server, which apparently has DTMF control channels in it that you can use to change the analog bridges IPs. So, in second place, we'd like to give a shout out to the team Fednot, who said that their entire preparation strategy was put laptops in suitcases. <laughs> And of course, last but not least, in first place, we have the absolute stealing masters. They stole more tokens than was even reasonable. So they led la like they're led by last year's individual champion Atlas. Can uh, can oh, and they also have an ambiguous name. It looks like it could either be first or last place. So I think that we've officially decided being first place. I'd like to give uh, a big shout out to the team first place. Why don't you guys come down? Atlas. There they are. CTF, the only competition where you get eight black badges. And the jackets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, open up the banner. So, starting with last year, it sort of became a tradition that this big banner that we get printed up every year goes to the winning team, so. Here's your banner, guys. Here's your jackets. You want to have your team captain come up here and say a little something?
First of all, I'd like to thank my awesome team. I'm not that great. I already told you that earlier this week. But I get, I get troops for choosing great guys. I'd also like to thank the Ken Shoto guys. They put together a great competition this year. The prequels also rocked. Thank you very much to uh, DEF CON staff, the wonderful Gophers, my wife. Oh, wait. And uh, thank you very much. A lot of you guys come up and support us, cheer us on. Appreciate it. It's been a long weekend. We did well. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you give a little insight into your like winning technique? I already told you I chose great guys. <laughs> uh, very early on, we one of my power hitters really just nailed down interacting with a modem real quick. Uh, a couple other guys worked with him to uh, to find access and get on everybody else's boxes, start stealing keys, and then submitting them automatically. Uh, we came to the con prepared, uh, like. We talked the day before, we talked the week before, we talked all the way up there. Uh, we scheduled, we had automated scripts so that when we'd steal a key, boom, it was already in. Um, and uh, as I said last year, we just tried not to piss everybody off so they wouldn't come and kill us. Also, as a quick aside, uh, team captains, we'd like to talk to you, get some feedback. So if you get a chance, we'll probably be hanging around for quite a while. So stop by and give us shouts out and like, let us know what you thought and whatnot. So. Congratulations again, team first place. All right, so um, that's it for my area. Um, we're going to have Lockheed come up. Again, if you have any ideas for contest, really would like to hear it. Also want more participation next year. Thank you very much from the contest area. Here's Lockheed with the network. Thanks, Russ. You can go drink now. All right, I'd like to uh, give you guys some stats about the network and DCTV this year. Um, first of all, this is what we do every year. We take about six or eight months to plan this whole chaotic thing that we do. We have a number of networks that we uh, uh, set up, uh, some that are more secure than others, uh, as well as taking on DEF CON TV. So I want to start out, actually, by talking about what happened with DEF CON TV this year. This was the plan. Nothing ever happens by plan. At the last minute we got some new restrictions placed on us. No PCs could be used to, dyna to uh, generate dynamic content and we could have no physical access to the head end like we're used to. It's okay. So we made DVDs every couple of hours and rush them up to the hotel staff to swap out. Sneaker net. I do want to actually uh, give props out to the DC801 guys who did get the movie channel stuff all ready for us. So um, I'm sorry I couldn't get played this year. Uh, we're going to work with the hotel to make sure that we have um, better things next year. And uh, of course we're always taking ideas so email address, mail us, don't spam us, thanks. The network this year is much what it always is every year. Uh, we have our trusty Aruba wireless kit, thanks to Dark Tangent. Woohoo! Um, open BSD firewalls, taking care of keeping people out of where they shouldn't be. Lots of cable and gaffers tape. This year we had a six meg connection to the outside world. And of course some really freaking awesome hotel IT and AV staff. We were really worried about this being a union hotel this year, seeing as we couldn't do a whole lot ourselves, and we had to make them do it, so we kind of consider that we've evolved to a higher state of being. But none of it would have been possible with a lot of homebrew. 
If you've ever seen the DEF CON knock, it kind of looks like that at any given time of day up in our luxurious skybox. Internet traffic this year, we saturated our connection all weekend long. So that's about 172 gigs of porn. <laughs> and one gig of MySpace. <laughs> On the wireless side, <laughs> and no, we did not keep copies of that. You're OK. On the wireless side, we have over 2,300 users uh, across the network. Uh, we were able to pull out a lot of stats here. We had, uh, on average, 220 people online at any given time, with as much as 515 uh, at one point. We only recorded two wired rogue APs, because we don't enable that. We did have 25 people trying to be the official DEF CON SSID. They were shut down. About 2,300 DOS attacks and 2,000 man of the mill attacks, all of which were stopped. And then a lot of ad hoc networks, which is just you guys trying to talk with each other or possibly causing chaos. Uh, wireless LAN, we had, as you can see, a lot of traffic going back and forth, some of which went out to the internet, some of which would not. And uh, as uh, my guys tell me, a lot of people are still trying to get you with GOATC. So I do, as uh, we mentioned at the top of almost two hours ago, I uh, want to give a lot of thanks to my infrastructure guys, Heather and Video Man. It's always good to have a married couple on infrastructure. Uh, Squeak and Evan for doing all the Wi-Fi stuff. Major malfunction for being a resident bad man. I take care of all the politics. And of course, Derek and James from Rant Radio for handling all the DC TV stuff. So up in the skybox, give them a hand, guys. So that's it until next year. Dark tangent, everyone. Thank you. So next year we'll need more of those mega gigabits, won't we? Um, I, I got a new statistic while uh, the contest results are being aired. Apparently this is the first time in history that every speaker that was supposed to speak spoke, and every speaker spoke on time, apparently. Relatively speaking, so that was a new a new milestone for us, and a lot of that I think is uh, is related to Agent X and the uh, the Wranglers, the cat herders, um, and speaker control. So that was very cool. And then also uh, Zach is walking over. We have, yeah, we <laughs> we have uh, st sitting over here the the two people he referred to earlier. We have Teresa stand up, and we have Doug stand up. These are the two people that we dealt with the hotel the most. <clears throat> Without their help and them working with us for many months before the show and during the show, uh, none of this would ever happen. And so uh, we want to say a uh, special thank you to you guys for being a super cool team to work with. And, uh, you know, we're not all that scary in the end. So, uh, <laughs> So we'll be seeing you next year. <laughs> so um, before I shut this thing down, um, I want to just open it up. If there, anybody has any questions, I have time for like, I don't know, four or five questions if you want me to talk about anything. Otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll shut this down. So, so the gold badge is that Joe created. He, he created one sheet. And uh, I think Joe's got what? Oh, you created? There's 20 of them. You've got how many? I've got one, yeah, and I owe you another one because you have two. So we've got 18 in the DEF CON World Headquarters somewhere. Did you want one? Is that what you're getting at? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, maybe in the future we'll give that away as an extra super secret prize or something because we have no need for 18 of them. I just want to keep one and put it on the shelf. So we might come up with a reason next year to release one, maybe for the badge hacking contest or something. So don't despair. Any other questions? <laughs> what? Why do I hate freedom? As in freedom.net? I like that network until it went down. Anybody else? Are we cool? Do we think we like this place? Are we going to come back next year? You think? Cool. Okay, so my uh, 
what I wrote at the beginning of the con in the program, the evolve or die, I think we're evolving, so that's the plan. So I'll see you guys next year, and give everybody a round of applause for putting this bad boy on. See you guys.